All right, so on January 20th, 2015, I published my uh, Minecraft hockey map, and it went pretty good. The trailer was awesome, and in this video, I'm actually going to be showing you the change log for Minecraft hockey 2.0. Um, so let's get started. So this change log is going to be pretty detailed because I wrote down a lot of stuff. So first thing is I made the team goals easier to see. Um, as you can see now, there's uh, the color wool, uh, the banners now on there. And the next thing I did was I changed the floor. So instead of it being uh, clay or whatever it was, what color it was, I don't remember. It is now this kind of, uh, well, it's dark prismarine, but it's, it's supposed to be, I don't know, it's supposed to look like the floor of a locker room. It's not the best, but you know, it works. Also, I uh, changed out the dark oak. I didn't like that after seeing it for a while. I changed that with some quartz, and uh, yeah. Up here, I uh, put in just some random stuff. <laughs> Here's a little Easter egg for you. Um, and yeah, so uh, under chest, you can't open it, but it's just supposed to be some like aesthetics and props and stuff. Now, there's also gonna be quite a few fixes. There was bugs in the game that I overlooked, and here are the fixes. Um, one of them is that the goalie kit did not get haste sometimes, so uh, that's fixed. A major flaw on my part was that I made it so everyone must be in game mode 2 for the game to start. What actually happened was it wouldn't teleport you and it wouldn't give you anything if you were not in game mode 2, but the game would still start. Anyways, I, I fixed that and it, it puts you in game mode 2 and then does everything else. Another fix is that the drop to reset puck if stuck it had a typo in the lower which is the purple text right there it had a typo and I fixed that I don't remember which typo it was but it's fixed <laughs> is what I wrote down in the change log another fix that was really annoying and I I knew I just didn't know how to fix it but my redstone in command blocks mostly command blocks actually skills improved uh, and it would be that when a player would uh, go and pick their kit it would just pick the closest player to the command block that wasn't exactly right here. It was kind of further back and a player standing here could get the kit rather than the player who pressed it. So now it's uh, picking the closest person to this general location. It's pretty much where you would stand to click the button. The same thing for the teams. Uh, you know, same thing as what I said over there. A big game breaker was that if you did not pick your kit, you did not get into the game. Now, if no kit is selected, but you did join a team, it will by default put you on the offense kit. But if no team is selected at all, it'll put you on spectator, and you will spectate the game. Even if a kit was selected, if you did not join a team, you'll just put in, be put in spectator, and you'll be teleported into the rink. General improvements to the teleporting to the rink. Uh, before, sometimes players would not get teleported into there upon game start, but now that's all been fixed and there should be no players left in the locker room. Also, there was a bug where players did not get their stick or the drop to reset puck uh, music disc. Uh, that was pretty annoying and also along with that, players did not get the boots they were supposed to get to uh, give them the speed. That's what gives them the, um, the speed boost or for the goalie uh, reduction, the speed reduction. But that's been fixed and you'll never get into a game without those things. Also, one thing I need to mention is that uh, these over here are not kits. Uh, I saw a few videos of people clicking these thinking they were kits, but the names below are just aesthetics. They're not kits. Uh, these are just great players in the NHL. We got Gordie Howe, Wayne Gretzky, Luke Robitaille, and just some other great players um, put up there just to fill in the space. Only thing that really does anything is your teams and your kits over here. In order to start the game, it's more clear that this is where you, what you click to start the game. There's a few more Easter eggs involved in this map. See if you can find them. The countdown for spawning the puck is now in title form instead of being in the text in the chat. The goal against sound has been updated, so now when you're scored on, you'll hear the sound. You'll know that it means that you've been scored against. Picking your kits uh, now have a softer tune to it instead of the harsh uh, noises it had previously. Before, TJ Oshie's description had a missing space in it, and now it's been fixed. There was an issue where Lime was automatically put into spectator mode. 
instead of being put on the ice where they're supposed to be, it's been fixed. Also, the goalie kit's haste effect, when it worked, it would show the particles, now it, the particles are hidden. There is now a team you can join to spectate the game. There were times when team players would not get the helmet, that's been fixed. TJ Oshie's uniform has been changed since he was traded to the Capitals from the St. Louis Blues. He now matches Alexander Ovechkin because they are on the same team. Sometimes the player would not receive the music disc back. Once they dropped it to reset the puck, that's been fixed. Gordie Howe has been added to the locker room. There has been an entire rework of the command blocks to run the map. In fact, every command block that was used before has been broken and the entire coding of the map has been redone and made a lot more easier to understand if you want to go check it out, but mostly it's for me so I can go back and see where everything is. So here's a look at it. Um, I'll show you a quick overview of what, what does. So uh, this area in the cyan and lime is the goal detection when an endermite goes in. This over here is what respawns the puck. Uh, when the game ends, this is triggered and it will send you the messages, thanks for playing and stuff. These two, the green and blue, are the fireworks at the end when a team wins. This little thing, this little contraption, kills any XP orbs from the Endermite and when it dies. And uh, this is the respawn puck from the disc 11. Over here is kit selection, which are these three things. It uh, changes your XP bar and basically gives you the kit. This is what the welcome message is when you get welcome to Minecraft Hockey version 2.0. The rules of the game, map credit, and this one would be kit info. So that's that, that's all the redstone. And then it gets triggered just by, yeah, here's one. This one will just set a redstone block over here to trigger it, team selection. And this is game startup. This is all the teleporting to the arena, and this is the spawning the puck. That one over there is respawning, it's a little bit different. You probably noticed already, but there's a ton of new beacons around here. Uh, just to give it that stadium feel, hockey games, they have lights all over the place, and this is the best I could do with that, so yeah, beacons. Now you definitely noticed this one already, but there's a uh, Jumbotron in the center instead of one of these. Also, the stands and the walls have been redone to look more modern. Uh, instead of dark oak, like as in the locker room, we have court stairs going around and we also have quartz and coal blocks and now that we can do trap doors without having to be on a block that really helps for aesthetics another great thing I added was an addition to the player benches and in between here we have um, a on ice reporter and he's holding a tripwire hook I'm supposed to represent a microphone he basically just uh, sits here and watches the game and reports what's going on in the bench also, I have these cactuses, and you're probably like, what What are these for? Well, they're supposed to represent Gatorade squirt bottles. Best I could do, it's, it's okay. Another great feature that I added, I'm happy about, is the light underneath the ice. I uh, added an option to play the game in day or night, so uh, you can find that by clicking on the rules and then choosing, um, or going into your chat and clicking day or night game. And you can find the light under the blue lines, under the face-off dots, and also under the red line in the center. There's also light underneath, I don't know if you'll see, yeah, you can't, but it's, un oh, actually, there you can. Right underneath the carpet of the goalie. Another great addition I really like is an update to the two flags we have here. Before they were just wool blocks, but I actually went ahead and put banners on them. For the Canadian banner, I put a little I don't really know what this is called for the banner, but it's just supposed to represent the stem that they have on the leaf on their banner. We can come look at the Jumbotron in more detail. Inside it's uh, hollow up here. We have some lights so that you can still uh, have that feel that the Jumbotron is on, even though there's a black screen for now. So a new addition to Hockey 2.0 is obviously the Jumbotron, as you saw already, but if a team scores, a jump, the Jumbotron will be replaced with this one and then replaced back to this one and this one and you'll have that little flickering effect. Final things I should add is I do plan on making a hockey uh, version that comes after this with a lot of more features and uh, I'll give you a spoiler. One of them is that I want to make it so the ice will slowly change to uh, packed ice over time as the players skate on it 
Alright guys, so I think that's about it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed and I hope you guys look forward to the trailer coming for the map. And make sure to download the map and play it for yourself if you want to record it for YouTube. By all means go ahead. Only thing I ask is you give credit in the video description of the map download. Or rather, even better, is the trailer video that I'll be posting soon. But uh, thanks for watching and I hope to see you in the next video I make. See you guys.